hi there. I have gotten many requests to do a hermit crab enclosure tour, so I'm going to do that for you guys now. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth about the details, like my sand mixture and why you need what and what you need, um, but I can do another video on that if anyone is interested. But for today, we're just going to do a quick little tage tour. Um, you could just probably just saw one of my guys who spotted me and bolted for his cave over there. Um, but to start out, I have a about an 80 gallon tank. Um, it is, I believe, handmade, so I'm not entirely sure if it is a gallon, so that's just what I've gotten off of my measurements by measuring the tank. It's about two, two and a half feet tall, foot and a half deep. Um, not sure how wide it is. It looks like it's probably almost three feet wide. Um, it is on a stand. With the stand, it is about six feet, and I do need that uh, step stool to get in. I'm a small girl. I'm only 5'5". Five, five. So I can just barely reach that sand when I'm standing up there to get down into the tank. Um, I have 12 inches of play sand eco earth mixed substrate, about 5 to 1 ratio of sand to eco earth. Um, they have two 6 inch deep pools, one salt, one fresh, uh, to submerge into completely. Um, lots and lots of places to climb. You can see that I have a reptile branch spread all across the tank with uh, plants zip tied all the way along it. Um, really helps keep the plants in place. They like to rip things down. Suction cups don't last too long so that is working really really well. None of the plants have ever fallen down because they're all tied up there. Um, I have, I think this is grapevine, this twisty one going across here, some choya wood and then lots of aquarium and reptile decor is in here uh, just to make some hides and they, most of them spend their time in this one. All nine of them are sometimes all shoved in there. Um, and they will build tunnels and uh, go everywhere else from inside of that. That's like the main hub. Um, I have three shell shops. This is my first one. It has about 10 shells in it. Uh, this is a pretty popular one. The one above it has um, what I call my odd shells. So shells that are much too small or much too big or oddly shaped. I like keeping them in there, even if they're not going to wear them, because I do like exploring them. And I'm believe it is important for their enrichment to be able to have different things to adventure and discover every day. Um, if we go over here, this is my newest one. I added about uh, two, two, three days ago, I think. Um, there's not that many shells in there. There were five new ones. Two of them have already been picked up, and I threw a couple other shells in there, too. Um, they have really been enjoying this one. This one's been very popular the last couple days. Um, lighting, I just use an aquarium light. It's nothing spectacular. Um, I'll bring you up to the top so you can see what my my situation is up here, which isn't very nice. Um, this tank, as you can see, it has a big opening in the back here, and it did not come with a lid because it is meant for fish. It has this lid here that closes like that, but that doesn't hold any humidity in. So what I did was took two pieces of plexiglass, um, there's two pieces here so I can lift this piece up and access the tank like that. Um, I hot glued at first and that fell off. I hot glued on the this wood piece and then taped it on. That just keeps the plexiglass from bending inward. Um, this one is insulated. It just has some food insulation tape to it so I can hold in humidity and heat with that. And again, this one I remove and I can get down inside. Um, they're light up here. About a two foot light. It is for aquariums. It's LED. It doesn't produce too much heat, but it does produce a little bit, which kind of gets right into the tank, which is great. Um, also, to provide heat, I have two heat mats strapped to the side over here. If you can see them, they are both also insulated, so I can direct the heat inward instead of it dissipating into the room. Um, I live in Arizona, so in the summer, not too much of a heating issue. Usually, one of those heating pads does it, but in the winter, two of them is perfect. Right side stays about 84 degrees, and over here it is about 80 degrees. I like giving them a variant so they can get nice and warm over here if they want. Cool down a little bit over here if they want. If they really want to get nice and cool, they can, of course, dig down to the substrate where there is no heat. Um, my pools do both have bubblers in them. Uh, I found that it really helps attract the crabs. Um, if your tank is sealed, it helps bring in oxygen, and it also keeps the water fresher longer. I only have to clean this maybe four or five times. Um, a month. Uh, I just suck out all the water with a giant syringe and pour new water in. They look a little bit dirty because they're sitting inside of a bigger container. It just makes cleaning easier so I can lift both of the containers up and this one stays in and I can just drop them right back down in there. Um, so they look dirty because the white container they're sitting in is dirty. It is not the clear containers that they actually bathe in are dirty. There's no sand in there. It's just the rocks. 
If we go down here just a little bit, you can see they have two food dishes. I like providing two in case one of the crabs decides that they want to guard the dish. Sometimes they'll put their whole body in there and just kind of tell the other crabs to bug off. Um, so I get like giving them two just in case uh, if someone is really hungry, they can go and have another option over there. Um, every day or every other day, they get fresh fruits, fresh veggies, nuts, seeds, different kinds of protein, uh, honey, they really love honey, tofu. Uh, today they just have some dried bugs covered in calcium powder. I will also give them cuddle bones. Um, they get a lot of everything. They are scavengers, so they will not turn anything down. You just gotta make sure it's not seasoned or have anything in it that they're not allowed to have, um, which isn't very much. There's very, very few things that hermit crabs can't eat. They can pretty much eat whatever you're gonna eat, um, unless that's bugs. That's probably something you're not going to eat, but they love it. Uh, they just get the dried bugs where the, you could buy like reptile food and stuff. Um, they also like the dried shrimp that you can feed the turtles. It's great stuff. I just mix it all into a jar and pour some calcium powder in there and mix it all up. I can just dump it right in their bowls. It makes it really easy. So yeah, um, I think that's about everything in this tank. If there's anything I missed, point it out to me. Um, I can go over it in a different video. If there's anything you want a video on specifically, I'm happy to do it. Um, maybe the pool, sand, maybe just hermit crab care in general. Um, I've been keeping these guys for about three years, haven't had any deaths, no surface molts. Everyone has been very happy. Um, looks like everyone's sleeping now. I can see a couple guys hanging out, just kind of covered by the plants. There's one little dude right there. And I think we have another guy hanging out back there. You can't, you can't even see him, but um, two guys out right now. I'm sure once this light goes off this evening, all of my guys will be out. And I can try to capture that too. Um, so yeah, I hope this was all right. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to make some more of these videos in the future.